Okay, this is an ambitious packet tracer. What I'm going to attempt to show in this packet tracer is a routing loop and a count to infinity scenario using RIP routing protocol with some misconfigurations or disabling some of the prevention mechanisms that help prevent routing loops and count to infinity with RIP. Okay, so um, I'll describe what we're going to start off with here. First of all, we've got all Ethernet connections here. We have R1, R2, R3, router 1, router 2, router 3. This is the 3 network over here, and this is host 3.100. And then in between these two routers is the 10 network, in between these two routers is the 20 network, and over here is the 192.168.1 network. Okay, and what I'm going to do first of all is just prove that everything is working. RIP is on. I've made some adjustments that I'll talk about in a second and that will cause problems on the network. Okay, and I'm going to ping 3.100 to start with. So we'll see here. Okay, there's a reply. So 3.100 is there. We get the reply, right? And what we should have is, um, so we could ping from this host to this host to 3.100 across all these networks and these routers are communicating using the RIP routing protocol. Now in the routing tables this router should see a connected route to the 3 network. So we'll put this over here and we'll do a show IP route and you can see that the 3 network is directly connected. Okay, So that's what I put here. C connected to the 3 network. Now R2 should see a RIP route to the 3 network that it learned of from R1 and that should be one hop away. So the 120 slash 1, the 1 indicates one hop away. And let's just double check. So we'll bring this up and we'll do a show IP route and you can see the 3 network is one hop away, right? And then R3 should have a RIP route to the 3 network that's two hops away. So we'll do this, type enable, show IP route, hit enter, and you can see that there's a RIP route in the routing table to the 3 network that is two hops away. Okay, so this is what you would expect from RIP, okay, um, that R3 has learned about the 3 network through RIP and it's two hops away. One, two, two routers away. And R2 has learned about the 3 network from R1 and it's one hop away, one router away. Right, so there, I put those there. Now, I've messed with some of the configurations here so that we can do a, a simulated test to show a potential problem. Okay, and I'll, I'll talk about that. First of all, on for um, RIP, some of the prevention mechanisms for um, preventing routing loops or a count to infinity scenario are um, update timers, hold down timers, and the split horizon rule. Okay, and the split horizon rule says that if if R2 has learned about the 3 network from R1, which it did, it cannot advertise back to R1 the way it came and tell it about the route. Okay, so that uh, it can't tell R1. And then if R3 has learned from R2 about the 3 network, it can't advertise back the way it came back to R2 about that 3 network. So that's the rule of split, split horizon. Now, I've disabled it on the 7 interface on R3 by typing in interface fast ethernet 7 slash 0 and putting in the command no IP split dash horizon. So I've disabled that. So now R3 can advertise that 3 network back to R2, disabling the prevention mechanism that will stop routing loops and count to infinity. Now, I've also disabled it on Fast Ethernet 1 on R2. So on R2, I did the same thing. I did interface Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0, no IP split horizon. Okay. Then another thing that I've done is on um, R3, I went router rip and I put in a passive interface command on FA00 so that this router will not send RIP updates unnecessarily out to this host. And that'll make it easier when we're in simulation mode to see the packets. And I did the same thing 
over here on R1, I put a passive interface command on this interface so that RIP does not talk to this host over here on the LAN, right? Okay, now, another thing that I did was I adjusted some timers. Now, um, you can put in, in under uh, once you're in RIP mode or config router mode, you can put in this command, timers basic, and if you put in the timers basic command, the default is 30, 180, 180, and 240. Okay, and that means RIP updates will go every 30 seconds. A route that is not heard of in 180 seconds is invalid. Routes that it knows of will be held for 180 seconds. And then a route that it hasn't heard of in, in uh, 180 seconds is invalid. And then after another 60 seconds is flushed at 240 seconds. Okay, so one of the um, prevention mechanisms is hold down timer. So and the way hold down timer works is if, um, if a route goes bad, if R1 has the route go bad, let's say, right, the three network goes down, right, it's going to hold that information for 180 seconds. So if R2 gives it misinformation and says, hey, no, no, the three network is up, R1 will not activate that network because it's held it in its information you know that it's it's held the route in the information and will not do anything for 180 seconds allowing a downed route to propagate through the network so that misinformation isn't exchanged back and forth and say no you say it's down no I say it's up and this router says no it's down and this router says no it's up oh, okay you know so it holds the information until everybody gets the memo so to speak right so I have changed that so on R3 and on R2 you can see I've put in the command timers basic 30, 180, 10 and 240 and that's changing the hold down timer from 180 seconds to only 10 seconds so it will not hold the route information if it learns if it thinks a route's bad but then it hears that it's good it will take that new information and put it in its routing table and we'll see what this is going to do on the network right so what we can do now is what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into simulation mode edit filters you can see I've check marked I've unchecked everything and just check marked ICMP and RIP so we'll be able to see RIP and ping packets on the network okay so that's one thing that I've done alright and okay let's stop that and what we're going to do is we're going to auto capture play and then see everything happen here so we'll do an auto capture play and we'll watch this scenario take off so they're R2 just sent RIP updates to R1 and R3 out of both of its interfaces. Now R3 and R1 have passive interface commands, so they won't send it out of both interfaces. They'll just send it back. So R3 sends it back, sends routing table information over to R2, its routing table information back to R2. R1 sends its routing table information to R2. It doesn't send it to the hosts here because I've disabled that with the passive interface command. And so everything is moving along swimmingly. And then all of a sudden, this switch here, okay, will go to the fast Ethernet interface 01, and I will turn it off and we'll watch what happens. So, oops, there it goes. Interface just went down on this switch, causing the route to go down. Now, what what would happen ideally if this in a situation like this is is R1 needs to would inform R2 that the 3 network is now down and then R2 would send that information to R3 tell it that its network is down right but that's not going to happen similarly so what we'll do is we'll let these these guys exchange some packets really quickly right you can see that we'll start examining the um, packet in from the routing tables and we'll see if R2 and R3 still have the 3 network in their routing table or whether they've learned that the 3 network is down. So we'll start with router 3 here 
and we'll do a show IP route command here and you can see that it thinks the three network is there and that it's two hops away okay all right and we'll look at R2 and we'll do a show IP route command hit enter and there it is and you can see that it still thinks the three networks up and they think it's only it's one hop away and now R1 we'll do a show IP route and you see that R1 thinks that the three network is up right it says hey I've got a rip route to the three network and it's two hops away so it's gotten misinformation from R2 it's learned from R2 that there's a three network and that it must be two hops away well we know that that's incorrect because the three network is directly connected to R1 and R1 doesn't even see it as a connected network anymore but it thinks there's a three network out there somewhere that it learned from R2 so R2 has advertised the route back to R1 spreading misinformation back to the router that actually had the the connected network that went down and it's put it in its routing table we'll do another show IP route and look now all of a sudden it says 3.0 is possibly down so it's it's trying to learn that the route is down we'll do a show IP route we'll see if it can figure it out R2 meanwhile show IP route is possibly down right and it looks like they're figuring it out but it did not happen as fast as you would have hoped also what we can do is we can ping we'll write type command prompt here and we'll try to ping the three network so we'll say hey, we'll ping this guy and there goes our ping right and we'll watch what happens now we might have down the network here Let's see here one more time. Send that ping. There goes the ping. There goes the ping from this. There's the ICMP packet. Goes to R3. Now R3 should drop this packet, but it sends it to R2 because it thinks there's a route. R2 sends this ping to R1 because it thinks there's a route. R1 thinks that it goes over here. It's down. Can't get there. He's trying to ping this guy and he sends it over here to this guy and then he's going to send it. Oh, where am I going to send it? Oh, I'm going to send it back to you. And so there's your routing loop. You can see that the ping from 1.100 to 3.100 is now stuck in a routing loop between R1 and R2. And not only that, we can see that if we do a show IP route, it sees that the routes are possibly down, but we did see uh, in a previous example, I was able to see a count to infinity happen where the routes were going up, uh, the metrics were actually going up and up and up. And let's see if we can see it here. And no, it's still seeing is possibly down, but we're caught in a routing loop here. And so we've successfully disabled RIP by messing with our hold down timer and split horizon mechanism.